In this video, we'll discuss the differences between one-variable equations and two-variable equations. So this is a typical example of a one-variable equation, x plus 2 is equal to 4. And in a one-variable equation, by performing algebraic operations to both sides, we can find a solution. For instance, by subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation, we have x is equal to 2. And so the solution set just contains the number 2. Contrast this with a two-variable equation, x plus 2 is equal to y. In this case, we can't solve for any variable, because no matter what we do, we'll have another variable on the other side of the equation. So in order to find solutions to this, we have to pick values for one of the variables, and then find what the corresponding value is for the other variable. For instance, if x was equal to 2, then the corresponding y value would be 4, because we're taking the x, replacing it with 2, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. And so the solution is the point 2, 4. And this could be called a point, it could be called a coordinate or an ordered pair. And the first element is the x value and the second element is the y value. Here's another example. If x was equal to 5, then um, y would be equal to 7 because 5 plus 2 is equal to y and 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. So the point 5, 7 would be a solution. And this could work for any x value, even let's take a ridiculous example. If x were equal to 1005, then y would be equal to 1007. And so the point 1005, 1007 would be a solution. And it should be clear that because we can pick any x value we want, uh, there are an infinite number of solutions in our solution set. Because it's implied that x values could be any real number. So the solution set is every single one of these points. And because we can't really list them, uh, we have to find some other way of representing them. The equation is implicitly a way of listing uh, all the points that make this equation true. But the other way is to graph um, the equation. So this graph actually is a set of all the possible points that make the equation true. And it might not be clear how the, a line can be a set, but take a look at this. If we pick an x value of 2 and draw that line until we hit the line, uh, then it corresponds to a y value of 4. And so just like before, we have a, the point 2, 4 lies on the line. And if we pick, let's say, x is equal to 4 and looked at the corresponding y value for that, it would be 6. So the point 4, 6 would lie on the line. And the line can be thought of as an infinite set of every single point that makes the equation true. That's what graphing a line means, or graphing an equation. It means you're graphing all the possible solutions. And because the line is continuous, it allows you to graph every single possible solution, not just a, a set of finite points. So here are the key ideas here. The solution to a two-variable equation is often an infinite set of points. Not just um, one solution, but an infinite number of solutions. A continuous graph is a way of representing all these points, since it would be pointless, no pun intended, to draw dots for each and every one of them. And three, to find any single point on a graph, you can just provide an arbitrary or freely chosen x value and solve for the corresponding y value. That's what we did when we picked, say, x is equal to 2 and found that y is equal to 4. Now, it's not always the case that a single x value will lead to one and only one y value. Sometimes if you pick an x value, it's possible to have more than one possible y value in an equation. However, lines and more broadly, every single thing that's called a function uh, is when, if you have an x value, you have one and only one y value associated with it. So in general, you can always find a point by picking an x value and finding the corresponding.